So let's look at sampling RF band limited signals and ask ourselves the question, why are the samples complex? Let's start by looking at a baseband signal. Here's a baseband signal in the frequency domain where we have a maximum frequency shown here, we call FM, and we know that if we want to sample this and be able to fully reconstruct it after having sampled it, then Nyquist rate tells us we need to sample at least twice the highest frequency component. So that's this frequency here, uh, and this is two times FM. That's the Nyquist frequency rate, and they would be real valued samples. So for example, our hearing can hear up to roughly 20 kilohertz, so that is FM, and the maximum frequency that we can hear. And if we were to digitize this, we would need to sample at 40,000 samples per second. And actually in a CD, uh, it is 44.1 kilo samples per second, for example, uh, in a CD. So there's a bit of leeway there, uh, extra beyond the 40 for CD sampling quality. But let's use these as examples here where we, we're taking 40 kilo samples per second, just for an example. Now let's think about the RF signal. If we were to take that signal at baseband of music, for example, and transmit it over an AM radio channel. So this is what happens. Uh, the signal goes from the baseband centered around zero frequency and it's transferred up to a carrier frequency. Now we've got uh, in other videos on the channel which explain amplitude modulation and you can find those in the description below. Also, we've got a video that explains what negative frequency is, because you've seen here that I've drawn positive and negative frequency. So there's a video on the channel that explains negative frequency. Again, look for it in the description below. So this is now our AM signal that is being transmitted at a carrier frequency. So for example, the frequency of the radio station. And for AM radio, uh, for example, that's around about one megahertz. So now uh, we've got one megahertz here. Well, I'll just write that here for as an example, one megahertz. So what we could do is we could think about this in our, when it gets to the receiver, we could think about this as a signal just like this, where we had an effective channel that reaches all the way up to one megahertz plus the 20 kilohertz. So this value here is, uh, we'll call that, uh, might call that F capital M because it's the, the maximum frequency of the modulated waveform now is F capital M. And of course this equals the carrier frequency plus the original FM from the baseband signal. Now what we could do is we could, if we wanted to digitize this, we could consider this in exactly the same way as the baseband example. And we could sample at two times FM. We could do that if we wanted to. Now let's think about this example here. So if we had uh, two times FM, as our sampling frequency, then FM in this case equals one megahertz plus 20 kilohertz. So then this would equal for us, two times that would equal 2040 kilo samples per second. So this is 2 million and 40 samples per second. So over here for the baseband signal, we had uh, 40 kilo samples per second. And if we were to do the same sort of approach to the RF signal, we would have to sample at 2 million and 40 samples per second. And that is a very high sampling rate. So instead of doing that, we take a different approach. And this is where we come back to this question about why the samples are complex. If we did it at that rate, they would be real valued samples, but very high rate, therefore a lot of samples per second for us to process digitally. So instead we realize that actually 
we are not interested in most of the bandwidth. And that's the key idea. We are only interested in the bandwidth around the carrier. We're not interested in any of this other bandwidth. So sampling at twice this highest frequency component here will tell us about this part of the frequency, but it will also tell us about all of this frequency here. And we're not interested in that because our message is only contained in this frequency band. That's the key idea. So what we can do is we can demodulate the signal using sinusoidal waveforms. And so again, check out the AM video on the channel that explains AM uh, modulation and demodulation. But here I'm showing what happens. We multiply our signal by a cos wave at the carrier frequency. And we know from signals and systems, if you multiply in the time domain, then you convolve in the frequency domain to give us this function here. Of course, there will also be ones at higher, but then we low pass filter. So this is from multiplying by a cos and then low pass filtering. Now this signal looks more like the original signal, but we've got to remember that the cos waveform has an orthogonal waveform, which is at the same frequency, but is orthogonal. And that is the sinusoidal waveform. So we can take the same, so if we don't do this with the sine as well as the cos, then we're only getting information from our original signal, which is in the cos dimension. But we've got the orthogonal dimension of sine, which is a 90 degree out of phase. And so we've got to also multiply by a sinusoidal wave, then low pass filter. And so it's the orthogonality of the cos wave and the sine wave that means we have to do it for both. We have to do this demodulation for both the cos wave and the sine wave. And here we can now see we got these signals here, which we can sample just the same as we sampled before. Uh, we can sample at twice the FM frequency here from the message. Uh, we can do it for both of them though now. And therefore we have, we either have twice the number of samples and they are real valued samples, or we could represent them as the same number of complex valued samples. And that's coming back to this question up here. So here we've got uh, two times, if we did it for our example over here, 40 kilo samples per second, we've got two times 40 kilo samples per second, um, which are a lot less than two million samples per second. So there's definitely an advantage to doing this down conversion. We can realize that one is a cos and one is a sine and they are orthogonal and we have a convenient mathematical notation of complex numbers to represent a sinusoid with the cos and the sine. Uh, and so therefore we have uh, 20 uh, sorry, two times 40 kilosamples per second of real samples or we have 40, if I put here real samples, or we have 40 kilosamples per second of complex. So we can uh, represent them that way. Because these samples of the cos and the sine are happening at the same time when we're sampling these two, because these are two separate waveforms that we have generated from doing a down conversion with a cos wave and a sine wave. So if you've found this video useful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. And of course, as I said, check out the description below where there are links to lots of other videos that have background material for this. And you'll also find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.